Hello and welcome back to Journey with Rebecca. My name is Rebecca and on today's journey I'm making a dandelion salve. I've made plenty of salves before but I've never made a dandelion salve so I'm excited to see how this one comes out. Um, I've done a ton of legwork already to infuse my oil with dandelions. Um, this is a sunflower oil that I'm using for my carrier oil. I never make a salve the same depending upon either the carrier oil that I'm using or the things that I'm adding to it. So I'm excited to see how this one turns out. There's so many uses for dandelions. Um, the whole thing's edible, useful, good for you. Um, and we, we only get them for such a short amount of time before they go to seed. So um, I still have more things that I want to do with dandelions and I'm running out of time. So I think I will just start with this and if I have enough that I haven't gone to see it already, I think I'm, I want to make some sort of recipe with them because they're really good for you. Aside from just eating the dandelion leaves, which are also really good for you as well. You can add them to salads, which I've done in the past. You can saute them, add them to a side dish. They're, the uses are just, and the possibilities are endless. But um, today I'm just going to focus on the sap. So I have my dandelion oil here that I have infused. This was a ton of dandelions that I picked. I did save some for the bees, so there's plenty for, the, for them. Um, okay, before we go any further with this video, I want to give you a breakdown of what I actually did to get us to this point. So I headed out to my garden and my yard, and I started foraging for dandelion heads. If you see the little white like pus that's coming out of the stem there, that's actually really good to help remove warts in a natural, non-chemical way. If you put that on a wart for two to three weeks, it will eventually go away, which I think is pretty amazing. Like I said, a ton of uses. I'm going to pop some up on the screen because I know that I will forget them and I don't want to do that. So, uh, like I said, save some for the bees. This is one of the first foods that bees, bees have during the springtime. So I definitely saved plenty for them. Um, all said, I probably had six to probably about six cups when I was done. I was also very filthy after I was picking all these dandelions and I had a severe allergy attack. So I washed my hands thoroughly and then I headed inside to actually give all these dandelions a quick wash too. So I put them into a strainer. I rinsed off any dirt, debris, grass, extra pollen and then I let them sit on a dish towel for probably a couple hours just to drain out any extra moisture. Then I added them to my dehydrator. I ended up having two trays of these and then I also had an extra tray of violets for another project that I am working on. So I got them all in the dehydrator and they sat for a very long time. Like I said, I don't know how long it was. It was a long time. Um, once they were all dehydrated, I got them out and put them into my mason jar. Again, several cups. It was practically full. And then I added my carrier oil to it, which is this time sunflower oil. I just pushed all of the dandelions down and made sure that all of them were completely covered by the oil, got out all the bubbles, and threw it into a makeshift double boiler, which leads us to where we are now. I put them in the oil and I put them in a double boiler on the stovetop for three hours and then I let them sit for an additional, well it's been over 24 hours now that this has just been sitting off of the heat. You want to make sure that you're not adding too much heat to this. So it was a very, very low heat, like still like not even hot enough that I couldn't pull this out with my bare hands because you don't want to scorch the oil or um, the dandelions. You just want to very slowly and gently infuse them. So what I'm going to do now is just take my dandelion oil and I'm going to put it over this cheesecloth and I'm just going to drain out all of the oil because what I want for my salve is just that good infused oil that has been sitting in the dandelions. We don't want to use the dandelions. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour this out and I'm just going to then squeeze it all out and hope that I have enough oil for the actual recipe that I'm trying to use. 
Make sure you're being really gentle when you are squeezing out all of your oil. You don't want to get any bits of the dandelion flowers in the oil. You just want the pure oil itself. I went ahead and strained this oil twice through the cheesecloth just to make sure there was absolutely no like imperfections or anything in it. It's absolutely beautiful. The color is amazing. It looks so good. And I had enough, so I'm using one cup for my salve, and I also have half a cup left over. So I can save this, label it, put it in a dark place, and use it for whatever I need later. So I'm super happy that I had enough and then some. So I have eight ounces in here, and I'm going to add one ounce of beeswax pellets. I got these right online. I will add a link in the description in case you need some. Um, this bag has lasted me forever. I've made so many things with this beeswax and still have more. Plus I have some up in my little pantry cupboard as well. So I'm just going to add my pellets to my oil and then I'm putting it into my makeshift double boiler. Um, again, you want this to be a gentle heat. You don't want this to be really super hot. You're not trying to burn anything. You're just trying to melt it and combine it together. So I already have a pot of water on it. There's just a little bit of water in the bottom, not too much, and it's on a very low setting. There are bubbles in the water, but it's not bubbling. Um, so I'm just going to take my jar of my dandelion infused oil and my beeswax pellets, and I'm just going to set it in here. Let the heat slowly work its magic, and then once it's all combined and melted, I'll add the rest of the ingredients in. The beeswax is just about melted. There's just a tiny bit left on the surface that hasn't melted yet. So I'm going to go ahead and add in one ounce of shea butter. This is the first time, I believe, that I'm ever using shea butter in a salve, which, um, whoops, <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. I don't want to introduce any water to it. Um, shea butter is very sticky. I don't know what that's going to do to my salve. I'm hoping it's not going to be sticky. Wow, that melted really fast. So I'm just going to let this mix in. Once it's completely melted, I am going to add just a little bit of essential oils. I'm choosing to add an orange essential oil just because I do want it to have a fragrance. So I'm just going to let this sit melt completely, add a couple drops of essential oils, and then pour them into my containers. I'm really pleased with the amount of salve that I'm going to end up with. I ran out of the jars that I normally use, which this is one of the jars that I normally use. I have dandelion root in here that I found the most ginormous dandelion root I've ever seen in my life last year, and I immediately dehydrated it and threw it in my home apothecary good for teas and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, my mom has been saving these little containers for me. So they're perfect for like little travel salves. How cute are they? Plus I have two bigger ones that are going to take a very long time to set. In the meantime, while they are setting, I have harvested myself a ton of, not a ton, a handful of dandelion roots. I'm going to get these washed up and put right into my dehydrator so I can add to the dandelion root that I already have so I can use it for teas and stuff like that. So I imagine it will take a very long time, several hours for the two bigger containers of salve to set. But the color is beautiful. It smells amazing with the orange essential oils in there and I can't wait to actually try it out. Okay, it's been hours. Probably almost five and a half hours because I've been busy doing all the things. Um, so we have these two just the cutest little containers of salve, then these huge containers of salve. I also dried all the dandelion root so I have all of this which I can use for tea and then I also have a half a cup of the dandelion oil so I made out pretty good with all of this. Um, and there's still a ton of dandelions in my yard. So um, I'm going to try this app because I haven't tried it yet. So my hands are typically dry year round because it's either winter time and it's just dry and there's no moisture in the air. So my hands are always dry. 
or I'm in the garden all the time, which totally dries out my hands. And this feels so nice. I was a little worried about it being sticky. It's not sticky at all. I'm so glad I was finally able to make a dandelion salve. Like I said, we have such a limited amount of time with these dandelions before they go to seed. So uh, I'm not sure. I haven't decided if I'm going to make anything else yet. I really wanted to make a jelly. I don't know if I can justify the amount of sugar that goes into it though. Like I saw one recipe last night that had seven cups of sugar and I was like, oh my God, I just, I just don't know. But I know you can bake with it and do all sorts of things with it. It's good and good for you, and I hope you try some of this for yourself. If you found value in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe, and I will see you all really soon.